The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. It's coming. All these voices. My name is James Hershey. Right back. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring Into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. How's everybody tonight? Tonight's episode is going to be on the Bunny Man. Now this is one that comes from my home state of Virginia. And is one of Northern Virginia's most gruesome urban legends. Like most urban legends, this one changes a little bit depending on who is telling it but it has floated around the mountains here in Virginia for many, many years. The thing that sets this particular urban legend apart is the fact that there was actually a real person that inspired this legend. And it's also a mix of many different genres. So you have part true story, you have part ghost story, and there's an actual place on the map that you can go visit. And there's even copycats out there that have kept this tale alive over the years. How much of this tale is true and how much is make-believe, I'll leave that up to you guys to determine. But one thing is for sure, don't let the name fool you. Because a visit to Bunny Man Bridge is not for the faint of heart. And if this legend is true, then it could wind up being the last trip that you ever take. So let's begin with the part of this legend that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt is 100% true. The actual events that took place that inspired this urban legend. In 1970, a couple was out driving, and they parked near a train overpass bridge. Now, what they were doing parked under that bridge is anyone's guess. I'm not going to try to figure it out. But what happened next is what gave birth to this legend. As the couple sat there parked under the bridge, a mysterious and threatening figure appeared, seemingly out of nowhere. According to the police report, this figure began screaming at the couple and threatening them with violence. The couple were understandably scared, and they drove away as fast as they humanly possibly could. The couple told the police that they didn't get a good look at the person that had threatened them, but that it was a male, and he was dressed in either white or very light clothing. And they also said that he looked like he had something on top of his head. Now, over time, this police report was interpreted to mean that the man had bunny ears. The reason for that is because you have later police reports that corroborate the bunny ear thing on top of the head. So that's the information that we have from the first ever documented police report. Now, the next appearance of the bunny man came in October of 1970. So it's the same year. Air Force Academy cadet Robert Bennett was driving with his fiancée in Northern Virginia. The couple stopped on the 5400 block of Guinea Road in Fairfax. Now, this was not too far away from the man's uncle's house. 
The couple were sitting in the parked car when things began to get weird. A man dressed in white and reportedly wearing bunny ears approached them out of the darkness. He began screaming at the couple that they were on private property and he yelled that he had their license plate number and that he was going to report them to the police. Now at this point you may be thinking, okay James, this is a weird story, guy running around in white and with bunny ears, kind of fruity, but what's so horrifying about any of this? I mean, why is this scary at all? This makes no sense. Well, this is where it's going to start to get a little scary because the man hurled a hatchet right through the windshield of the car, narrowly missing hitting the couple. The couple then did exactly what you would expect them to do, and they hauled ass out of there, and they went to the police station. When they arrived at the police station, the hatchet was still buried in the windshield, and Bennett was pulling pieces of broken glass from his fiance's hair as he told the police what had happened. Now, the police searched for the man that was in the bunny outfit that threw the hatchet, but they couldn't find anyone suspicious in the area. So that was that police report. Now, the next police report that mentions the bunny man occurred 10 days later, and this was right around the time of Halloween. This one took place at a construction company. A security guard named Paul Phillips was on duty that night, and he came across a man dressed in black and gray and wearing bunny ears. So the bunny ears are still there in this police report, but now the guy went from wearing white or very light clothing to a black and a gray clothing. The man with the bunny ears was vandalizing a house, and when Phillips approached him, the man said, and I quote, All you people trespass around here. If you don't get out of here, I'm going to bust you in the head. End quote. Now the security guard was a little bit freaked out by this guy. He looked kind of weird. He was saying some violent things. So he went and called the cops. But when the cops got there, they didn't find anyone. The dude had left. Now, once this story hit the papers, the floodgates were bust wide open and business really started to pick up because the Fairfax County Police got over 50 reports from people that had claimed to see the bunny man. So these are the actual police reports that have encounters with the bunny man that are on record. Now we're going to get into the actual legend itself. So according to the legend, the bunny man is a man with bunny ears, usually dressed in white, but sometimes in some of the tales he's dressed in black or gray, and that he will attack and kill young couples that are out at night parking in the car. And he usually attacks them with an axe or a hatchet, um, his death toll cannot be accurately counted because, quite honestly, there is just no way to verify all of these accounts, or really many of them. But it is said that if you trespass at his bridge at night, that he will come and try to hack you to death with his axe. And I'll get into a lot of more of the specifics on that later on. Okay, so now we know the legend, and we've gone over the actual police reports that are related to this case. So let's focus now on the question of who is the bunny man. Now there's several different versions of this as well. The most popular origin story is that he is the spirit of a crazy man that escaped an asylum way back in 1904. In this version of the story, a group of criminally insane people were being transported by bus to a new facility. The bus unexpectedly crashed, and everyone was killed except for one man. This one man escaped, vanishing into the night, and was never seen again. The man's name was Douglas Griffin. He began to kill people and animals, uh, mostly rabbits, on the animal side for food, but a little bit of livestock as well. Douglas was never recaptured, and after he died, his ghost continued to kill anyone foolish enough to trespass in his territory. Now, in some versions of this story, it does not end with Douglas never being seen again. After the body of a man that Douglas had killed was found, the police tracked him to the train tracks near the bridge at Fairfax Station. They found Douglas near where the asylum bus had originally crashed and began chasing him. They chased him onto the tracks, but when they heard the sound of an oncoming train, they had to jump off the tracks and get out of its way because they didn't want to get hit. 
Douglas Griffin did not share their concern, and he did not run from the train. And instead, he threw himself directly in the train's path. Now, why he did that, maybe he didn't want to go back to the asylum, or maybe he was just too crazy to know any better. As the train struck him, he let out a long and loud howl of devilish laughter. Although his body was never recovered, the police assumed that he was killed by the train. So that would make this bridge his final resting place and the reason that he still haunts the area today. Now that is a very cool story, but is it true? 1904 was a little early for buses to be common in transporting inmates of prisons or asylums. So you got a problem there. Another fact that destroys this story's credibility is that there were simply no asylums in the area in 1904. So it looks like this version has to be thrown onto the myth pile, but it is the most popular version of this story. Now let's look at how he got the name Bunnyman. This is going to be a very short little aside, but it's kind of interesting. You might assume that he got that name because he wore the bunny ears, and he runs around dressed as a bunny, basically. Okay, that is part of the reason, okay? But it's only part of the reason. The other half of it is that while Douglas Griffin was on the run, he was mutilating livestock and wild animals. Some of this mutilation might have just been because he's nuts and psychopathic. But I imagine that most of it was to feed himself, because he would get hungry. Now, the most common corpses that were found were that of bunnies. And this was determined to be his main food source, and what he'd been living off while he was on the run. His steady diet of rabbits and his habit of leaving their mutilated bodies where people would find them, that is the main reason that he got the name Bunny Man in the early stages of this legend. Nowadays, when people call him the Bunny Man, it's probably because of the bunny ears, I would imagine. Now, one particular tale from this legend shows that the Bunny Man did not just enjoy mutilating animals, but that he really liked mutilating his victims as well. So as the story goes, it was Halloween night in 1905. Now, in this tale, a bunch of kids went to the bridge to drink and to enjoy the holiday as teens often will. In the morning, the kids were found brutally murdered. Their throats were slashed, they were gutted, and their bodies were left hanging from the bridge for everyone to see. And the kid's killer was never caught. According to the legend, this type of murder happened again in 1906. And the one girl that was said to have witnessed the crime was tried and convicted for the murders. Now you might think since this girl was tried and convicted and put away, that's the end of it, right? Well, this type of murder continued happening with the mutilated teens being hung from the bridge about every decade until 1973. Now that's what the legend states. Did these murders actually occur? Or are they just part of the urban legend? So, in trying to determine this, I went back and, and checked and tried to find any accounts of large groups of teens being murdered, gutted, and hung from the bridge. And I can report to you that there is a serious lack of evidence that they ever actually took place. But the people who believe in this legend and the people of the area, they absolutely believe that it's true, and they believe that these murders were committed by the Bunny Man. Now, to let you know, this Bunny Man bridge up at Fairfax Station is near Fairfax, Virginia. It's in Fairfax, Virginia, and that's not that far away from me. That's less than an hour's drive from my house to this bridge. So I'm very well acquainted with this legend and very well acquainted with these people. Now, to break down what these people believe, it is said that if you go to the Bunny Man Bridge, on Halloween night, you will see a group of spectral teens drinking and having a good time. It's kind of funny how it's always on Halloween. You ever notice that? On a lot of these urban legends, it's always Halloween night at midnight. It, that's the most popular time for everything to happen. So a few minutes before midnight, the teens will disappear. And right before midnight, you will see 
a whole bunch of rabbits appear at the bridge, signaling that the bunny man is coming. Then a light will appear on top of the bridge. Now perhaps this is supposed to be the light from the train that struck him down? I'm not sure. At exactly midnight, the bunny man himself will appear under the bridge. And it's said that his spirit will shine so brightly that it will temporarily blind you. Now according to the legend, if you do not run at this point, then the bunny man will kill you. He will slash at you and hack at you with his axe, and he will gut you, just like he did his other victims. And in the morning, they will find your mutilated corpse hanging from that very bridge. Now, for the million dollar question, is any of this true? Now the answer to this is surprisingly, yeah, some of it is actually true. The police reports are absolutely true. And the Bennetts that had the hatchet thrown through their windshield, they have repeatedly gone on the record as saying that it absolutely happened. And they even still have the hatchet. They actually have it framed up on a plaque on their wall. I can also tell you, being a local, that the police in this area keep a very close watch on that bridge especially around Halloween every single year. They set up roadblocks and they try to keep people from going down to the bridge on Halloween. And they've even passed laws to make it illegal to walk on the bridge at any time. Now, do they do all this to keep people from being murdered by the bunny man? Or do they do it because people can be very stupid and they don't want accidents on the tracks that could end up with innocent people getting hurt or killed. That, my friends, I will leave up to you to decide. My opinion on it, I believe that there was a crazy guy who was wandering around trying to attack people with an ax. That's what we have from those police reports. I don't know whatever happened to this fellow. The legend states that the guy from the police reports was the ghost of the original bunny man. The mental patient that escaped. Do I believe that is true? Do I believe these people were seeing a ghost in these police reports that was threatening them with violence and trying to kill them? Or do I believe that it's just an urban legend? To me, it doesn't line up properly. And I'll explain that. In the original legend, you have a mental patient that has escaped. So you got a crazy guy. Now, in the tales of what he did, we find that he did kill animals, and he did kill people. So he would be crazy enough to attack people. But where this thing breaks down for me is the idea that you had a group of teens who were drinking and partying up at the bridge. And the ghost of the crazy guy not only appeared to them and murdered them, but gutted them and hung them from the bridge. That's where it breaks down for me because you don't see that kind of activity from ghosts. You see it in horror movies, but you don't see it in real life. When you have real life spirits and ghosts, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're lucky if you get a knock or an EVP. You know, the, the whole thing from like Poltergeist where, where furniture's flying across the room and all that, that almost never happens. And when it does happen, a lot of times it's a case of telekinesis or something else. It's not actual spirit behavior. I'm not saying it can't happen because it can, but it's very, very rare for the slightest little stuff moving around and stuff. It doesn't happen very often. Sometimes you get like a car going across, you know, like a toy car, a ball roll or something like that. But you're talking about a ghost or spirit being able to manipulate the physical realm to the point where he can murder, gut, hoist up and hang a whole group of teenagers. That, to me, just seems impossible. Also, it's a group of teenagers. At that time of your life, you're stronger than you'll ever be. You're in better shape than you will ever be. And you are definitely able to run very, very fast. So, 
let's say that the ghost does appear and murders somebody. Why in the hell would the entire group of teenagers stand there and wait? Their turn to get slaughtered. That also makes no sense to me. If the legend was one of the teens got killed and the rest ran away scared and they reported back that it was a ghost, that'd be a little easier to swallow. But the idea that a whole group of teenagers were murdered and hung from the bridge, gutted and ripped apart, I don't buy it. I think it's BS. Also, when you go back and check the records, there's no records of this happening. Especially no records of it happening every decade. You hear tell of it. There's a lot of people that say it happened. It's part of the urban myths, the, the, the mythologies of the area. People talk about it all the time. But people talk about a lot of things in the mountains. Doesn't necessarily mean they're true. So my verdict on this is it's just an urban legend. It has some nuggets of truth in it because you do have the police reports, and that did actually happen. That's verifiable. That is documented. That is police reports. But a lot of this other stuff that goes along with the legend, I think, is BS. I don't think there was a crazy guy that was transported by bus in 1904. That doesn't even sound right. That's silly. How many buses were driving around in 1904 anywhere? much less being used to transport crazy people. There was no asylum in the area, so that would mean that they were transporting from way far away where there was an asylum and just happened to be going through the area. And I guess that's possible. But you go back to the time frame. It's 1904. I just don't think a lot of buses were in use then for transporting prisoners. So I don't buy that. I think the whole thing with the ghost... And all that, I think it's just a tall tale. It's, it's, a, it's one of those campfire tales that people tell to scare each other. Anytime you see on Halloween night at midnight, that kind of doesn't pass the smell test to me. I'm not saying that there aren't tales that say that that aren't true. Because I'm sure there are. But it seems like every single scary story is set at night. Most times on Halloween night, and always at midnight. Or if people are more involved in the paranormal, then they'll set it at 3 o'clock. Because that's the time when a lot of spirits are active as well. So I think it's, I think it's BS. That's my verdict on it. Now I'm going to throw over to Old Boy now and get his opinion on it. And thank you, bro. This has always been a really interesting one for me because I've been hearing this story about the bunny man forever. It started back east. I've heard about it because I'm originally from Pennsylvania and I moved to California when I was seven. But I've heard the story because, you know, Virginia's right by Pennsylvania. Yeah, Virginia's right by Pennsylvania. So I've heard a lot of urban, urban legends. The bunny man, you know, the green man, all kinds of different urban legends. And I, I'll get into those later in a minute. But the Bunny Man story has always been fascinating because I saw it a long time ago on the History Channel or Discovery, one of them. They used to go to haunted places, and that's the first time I've ever seen the Bunny Man. They did a thing there to see if there was evidence of him coming, you know, after midnight. And nothing ever happened. They heard some noises. So you never know, especially with some of these shows, they, they, they lie about everything. Or... Not most of the stuff they do, they exaggerate or they 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 pretend to make you guys watch the show. So I was listening to what James was saying about in the early 1900s, this this guy escaped and he started doing all these killings and killing animals, and that's why they call him the Bunny Man because he was killing mostly rabbits, and that would make sense because there's a lot of rabbits around that area, and you could kill a couple cows here and there if there's some farmers there. But what I was thinking is. Maybe not a bus, but if there was a train, that's how they delivered prisoners back and forth and mentally ill prisoners. That could be a possibility now. If that, like, oh, the train crashed and he got away, that would make more sense back then, especially in the early 1900s. That's what most of the time they did. It's not impossible he was on a bus. It's not. It's improbable. What happened in 1970 sounds like that's real. Like, either the guy was trying to copy it, or he was just insane. There was only a couple incidents that happened. He threw the, the, the hatchet through the window and he, he yelled at people. And there's other stories that he, you know, he chased people out of the forest or woods or whatever you would call it. But then he, he disappeared. Do I think the bunny man exists where they, he 
dismembered children, teenagers, whatever, and hanged them through the um, the bridge. I think that's an urban legend. I think that was a camp story. People say they go there at tw- after 12 on Halloween and they can hear something. He'll come after you. This shiny light. And if you stand still and you don't run, he'll kill you and just do the same thing. Dismember you and tie your feet by the, uh, you know, on the bridge and hang you over and get you. That That's crazy because the one thing about that, that's how you would gut a rabbit. Kind of weird. Maybe that's why they call him a bunny man. Because the way he killed people. He gutted you like a rabbit and skinned you. James, you were saying earlier he'd kill them in gruesome ways. Maybe that's why they really call him the bunny man, not because he had bunny ears and he ate bunnies. But that would make more sense anyway. But, you know, he, I guess the other guy wore bunny ears and he ran it, and then he just disappeared. I think that might have been some crazy guy or some guy doing a hoax to scare people out of the woods. Maybe they didn't want people in the woods. You never know. You got all these weird people have these weird ideas. Maybe he was a tree lover or... Um, Somebody just didn't want these people in the woods, and they chased him out, and he took that legend and kept him running it, kept it going. You never know, because it's happened, and, and there's a lot of copycats that's happened. So just like the clowns, like people would dress up like clowns and back east, and they would come out attacking, you know, scaring people. And it was like a phenomenon that was going on the last couple of years. People were dressing up like clowns, but some people were getting shot over that stuff, man, because some people don't play with that. You know, they get, you know, like that one guy was in a city, he jumped out in the, in the ghetto trying to do that, and they shot, they pulled guns on him, and he ran away. So, I think some of this was hoax, and, and, and it came into, like, like an urban legend. I think that's what this is. Now, the, the, the 1970 thing, I think that's real. It was, somebody was just crazy, and, or somebody who was doing a hoax to scare people out of the woods, but I believe that one. The other one, now, there's got to be some truth to every of these stories, though. Maybe it got twisted around, exaggerated. There may be a little bit of truth of the bunny man, but it's been exaggerated. And it's not what you hear now. Like, he was killing people, hanging them over, teenagers partying, and, you know, they disappeared, and they're dismembered. And, you know, I don't believe that for one bit. But maybe there was a bunny man at one time, and he really did do some things. Because in the 1900s, there were some really crazy people. Albert Fish, you know, he was a killer. You had all kinds of different murderers back then. So that could be a possibility, but highly unlikely. If it was, it got exaggerated to what it is now, an urban legend. And with urban legends, you've always got to watch because most of it, 90% of it's baloney and exaggeration and BS, and 10% is fact, or 15, that gets blown out of proportion. I'll tell you an example. In Pennsylvania, my parents told me a story of this couple that drove out in the middle of the woods. And they were hanging out there, you know, whatever they were doing, and they broke down. So the, the, the boyfriend wanted to leave the car to go get help because, you know, about a mile or two down the road, there was a house. But it was really cold and windy and rainy. So they argued back and forth for about a half hour, and she, he, got, he left. Well, she locked herself in the car, and she had a blanket, and I guess she had like a little pocket knife. A couple hours later, he didn't come back. She got tired, locked the doors up, leaned back, and had a little blanket and that little knife. But the whole night, she heard something hitting the top of the roof. She was so scared. Eventually, she fell asleep and woke up in the morning, and it was her boyfriend hanging dead from being stabbed, and his fingertips were hitting the top of the roof. And, and, and then I saw uh, uh, the Urban Legend movie, and they showed that. That was what was weird about that. It ended up being in a movie. Just like the Bunny Man, there's a whole bunch of movies, like the Bunny Man movie, Bunny Man 2, Bunny Man Massacre, there's a, the lore, he was in, a, uh, I guess, a series called The Lore, The Bunny Man, uh, it was on the show, I, I know there's like a couple of songs about the Bunny Man, a couple of references like Donnie Darko, the Bunny Man in the show, I, mean, I was reading it that Donnie Darko kind of got the whole Bunny Man thing in there, if you guys seen that movie, Donnie Darko, that movie's really good if you could check it out, but that's a reference to the bunny man it is a very popular urban legend because i think even in the urban legend movies there's like one or two or three of them they he's in that so they made movies about him people go down there and fairfax and actually try to see if they could see him you can get in trouble there because they they want it no one going down there because i guess you can get killed if you fall on the on the bridge or do something stupid trying to climb you can break your neck they don't want to get sued and, and, it, and, and this is what happens with all the legends. All these people come out of nowhere to see if it's real. Just like Area 51, Bell Witch, 
aka the Blair Witch, people come out of the woodwork to find out this stuff because everybody thinks they're some kind of expert. Just like with ghosts, they think they're some expert because they saw something on TV and they want to see, you know, and, and see if it's real. The one thing I'm going to say is with these people who always do this, one day you're going to find out it's real and you're not going to know what to do. And I don't think you want to know what's real. I, I think it's hilarious. Like we were talking earlier, some of these shows, people will talk for 20, 30 minutes to these ghosts and all of a sudden something will happen and they run. And just like when you go looking for cryptozoology or these killers, what if you do find run into this? What are you going to do? Are you going to throw a flashlight on them, your camera? If Bigfoot's real and he's 10, 12 feet tall, you're not going to win. Unless you have a gun. Most people, those people don't have guns on them. They're, they're trying to, you know, they have a knife or something. They ain't going to win. One day you're going to run into something. And if the bunny man was really a ghost, what are you going to do? You can't shoot it. You're going to run. So I never understood that when people who don't know what they're really talking about, they get into this stuff and they do it. Because it's like a thrill to them. It's a high and it's crazy. These how many people get involved in this and want to be so, want to prove everything right or wrong or come, you know, famous. Because me and James do this show because I enjoy it. I enjoy doing a different show every week and I know he does. That's why we do a different show every week. If you notice, we don't do reruns. They're all new shows. That's what you'll always get with us is brand new shows. But this was always an interesting story. I love this story. Very interesting. I love when James talks and tells us because you learn a lot more. What I'm going to say is I think the 70 is true, and I think that most of the 1900s was not. Something did happen, though. I will say that. I think there's some kind of backstory to it. Maybe we can find some evidence. But I think that most of this is BS with the killing stuff. Maybe there was a killer. Maybe there wasn't. It's not impossible, you know, with the bus thing. But it's prob it's improbable. I don't I don't know. I, I I mean it's it's a very interesting story. I love it. I love these urban legends. I love when we do this, especially Bunny Man, because it's very popular. So I've seen numerous shows talk about it. So I mean I've all, we've been talking about doing this show for a while and we finally got a chance to do it and we'll do it maybe down the line we could find more evidence and talk about it again. But that's all I can say about that, James. What do you think? I don't believe that Douglas Griffin the guy from 1904, I don't believe he actually even existed. So I think that what happened here was you had some guy that acted up in the 70s. That's what the police reports are based on. And I think after that, because it was so weird with the guy wearing bunny ears and everything, after that, you had this story evolve, this origin story for this supposed ghost thing, right? I don't think Douglas Griffin ever existed. I don't think that what we're dealing with here is is a situation that happened in 1904 and then the ghost coming back in 1970 and then people saying, oh man, that must have been that guy that died in 1904. If you go back and you look, now granted records were not the greatest back then, not like they are today, but there were records. And if you look in 1903, 1904, 1905, 1906, you do not find a death certificate for a Douglas Griffin that died by getting hit by a train. It just doesn't exist. It's not there. Now, whether he was from this state or not, if he died in this state, there would have to be some sort of death certificate issued. I'm not sure if they did that back then, but I imagine there had to be some kind of paperwork, and there's just simply nothing. If you go back to the time and you look for newspaper articles, there's nothing. Now, you would think if you had a crazy person that escaped, mutilated animals, murdered people, was chased onto train tracks by the cops, and then threw himself in front of the train, that's a pretty sensational story. So you would think somebody would have wrote about it. There would be something to find that tells you that it actually took place. But there's simply nothing. So I don't think that that fella ever really existed. I think he's a completely imaginary character that was made up to explain these strange occurrences in the 70s. So... You have to look at the occurrences that happened in the 70s. What was that? We can pretty much rule out the idea of it being a ghost. I think the reason people think it's a ghost is because when the cops went to look, they couldn't find anything. Well, you had a guy that was wearing bunny ears, and that was the main description. He's, he's dressed in white wearing bunny ears. We know it's a guy. We know that's what he was wearing. It doesn't say whether the guy was white, black, Hispanic, Asian, whatever. All it says is that. So... Put yourself in the role of the police officer responding to that call. 
all you know is there's some dude wearing bunny ears. So you start looking for a dude wearing bunny ears. And you don't find a dude wearing bunny ears. Well, if he's wearing light-colored clothing and bunny ears, it's simple to just take off the damn bunny ears. Then all of a sudden, you're not a dude wearing bunny ears anymore. You know, so I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that the cops didn't find anything. I don't think that means it's a ghost that disappeared. So you have to ask yourself, what was it? Because that's not normal behavior. So what was it? Why did that person act that way? There's a couple of possibilities. He could have just been a crazy guy. Now, the fact that those occurrences took place in a relatively short period of time and then didn't take place again, at least not on record, there's a lot of stories that the behavior went on for a long, long time, for many, many years and decades and all this, but it's there's no record of it. The only record of it are the police reports that I read. So that is a span of a very short time, a month or two, okay? So it could be that this guy was somebody who was just passing through who was crazy, acted crazy, and kept on moving. That's why you didn't hear anything more from it. Maybe it was something completely different. Here's a neat little idea. That area now in Fairfax is very built up. It's basically a suburb of Washington, D.C. now. So it's very city-fied. It's not mountain, okay? But back then, it was a lot more country than it is now. It still wasn't like where I live out in the mountains, but it was a lot more like where I live than it is like the city today. So one thing about Virginians, we really do love our shine. And in order to have your shine, you've got to have somebody that has a still. And the place they put stills is in the woods. Because in order to have a good moonshine still, you need to have cold running water. Okay, like a stream or something like that. And you want it to be out of sight so that people will not see it because it is against the law and you will go to jail. Now, if you happen upon a moonshine still, the people that own and operate that still are understandably not happy to see you because they do not want you reporting to anybody where their still is because that means they're gonna go to prison and they're gonna lose a hell of a lot of money because a copper pot to make a still and a piping and all that, it's expensive. So it's not a small thing for them to come bust up your still and take you to jail. Even if you get away, it's hard to move all that equipment in a quick manner. So most likely they're going to find your still, they're going to bust it to hell, and then you're going to be out a lot of money. So one thing moonshiners will always do is they will try to scare you away. Now, they do this in many different ways. Most times, especially back in that time period, it was through gunfire. You know, if you wandered too close to a moonshine still, you'd hear a bunch of hooping and hollering and yelling, and they'd start shooting into the air. And that would convince most normal folk to get the hell out of there. And then they would pack up their still and they'd get it away as quick as they could. But depending on what you're doing, if you're in the middle of making shine, you can't just pack up because your still is very hot. It's it's full, so it's heavy. It's got mash in it. it you know, it's, it's not an easy disassemble. So what if these couples... Now I'm talking... Let's talk about the first one where the couple was in the woods, and let's talk about the one where the, the hatchet went through the windshield. Those two occurrences. But in both of those occurrences, the fellow was wearing white, and he had bunny ears, and they were out in the woods, and they were parking at night. Another thing is moonshiners like to work at night because, one, it's cooler, and two, less chance of somebody seeing you and reporting you. Because if you do it in the daytime, you got to have a fire underneath you still in order to heat the mash so that you can make the moonshine. So when you have a fire, you have smoke, and then people will know where you are. So a lot of times it'll work at night. That's one of the ways that moonshine got its name of moonshine is because of the shine of the moon, because they always did it at night. But what if these couples went down there parking to get a little romantic, have a little alone time, and they parked a little bit too close to a still? And maybe this moonshiner decided he needed to scare these people away. But he didn't want to just start shooting in the air and everything, because if he did that, then they'd freak out they'd know he was a shiner or somebody trying to hurt him and he would have to move all of his equipment. So maybe he decided that he'd throw on a pair of bunny ears he had up in the truck. Maybe he had them for Halloween. Maybe he had them just because his kid liked bunny ears. Who knows? But maybe he'd throw those on his head and he'd run up and, and act all crazy and they'd leave. It's possible. Especially if he had been sampling his own product, <laughs> which is something that, that you always do. So... That's a fun little possibility. Maybe what we're dealing with here is something along those lines. Maybe you had a shiner out in the, out in the woods that 
was trying to scare people away from his still. Now, that wouldn't explain the, the incident that happened at the construction site, because there's no reason on God's green earth to have a moonshine still in the middle of a construction site. That doesn't make any sense. But that guy didn't exactly fit the description either, other than the fact that he had on bunny ears. So I think maybe what that might have been was just a copycat. You know, that might have been somebody that heard the first two instances happen and thought it'd be funny if he did the same thing. But maybe all he heard was bunny ears. He didn't know that he was supposed to wear all white or, or light colored clothing. Maybe all he knew was that the fella had on bunny ears, so he put on bunny ears and thought it'd be funny. You have a lot of stuff like that happen too. And that happens everywhere, not just with urban legends. That happens anytime there's real murders, anytime there's anything. I mean, when, when Old Boy was talking about the clown thing earlier, when that started happening, it started happening as pranks, where people would do it as pranks on YouTube and stuff like that. And you had all these people that would see that or hear about it and think it was funny, so then they'd go out and do it. And then next thing you know, you got this stuff happening all over the country. Well, over some of the country. You don't have stuff like that happen around where I live very often because you don't want to sneak up on no redneck as a clown and, and try to scare him because one thing about rednecks is every single one of us has a gun and we usually have it on us. And you you definitely don't want to jump out in a clown makeup acting all stupid with a redneck because you're either going to get shot or you're going to get your ass whooped. One of the two. That's guaranteed. So you didn't you had it mostly in, in city areas where you aren't allowed to carry guns and where the people aren't all that tough. That's where you had a lot of this stuff taking place. But maybe that's what that other fellow was with the bunny ears at the construction site. Maybe it was just some guy that, that heard about the other two and thought it was funny and thought, hey, watch this, I'm gonna do it, and everybody's gonna be talking about me. Because everybody wants their, their minute of fame, you know, their fifteen minutes of fame. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants to be famous for some reason. And uh, they do some real stupid things sometimes to get famous. So I think very well that could have been what that was. And as soon as the security guard went to call the cops, mission accomplished. You know, that guy made his mark and the cops are coming. It's going to be a big story. Then he got the hell out of there. To me, that makes complete and total sense. He's dressed in black and gray. All he has to do is take off the bunny ears and pitch him somewhere, throw him in a dumpster or whatever, and just walk on down the street. And all of a sudden, he's just a normal person again. So I don't think there's much mystery to this mystery. I think the things in the 70s were real. At least the first two, I believe, were real. The third one, at the construction site, I believe that was probably a copycat. But I don't think that it was anything like what they make it out to be. Because if you listen to the legend, there's all these people that were murdered and all this stuff. I don't think any of that ever happened. Because one thing about killing somebody, it's very hard to kill somebody quietly without anybody writing about it or reporting on it especially if everybody knows about it because remember what you have here is a story that everybody's talking about so all these teenagers they were hung from the bridge they were gutted it was a massacre oh it was horrible but yet not one single person writes about it not one single police report about teenagers gutted and hung from bridges now why do you think that is if this happened continually every decade, where you had groups of teenagers murdered, won't you think somebody would have called the cops? At least one parent would have said, Now where the hell is little Timmy? He ain't been to dinner in three weeks. Maybe I ought to call the police. Not once. Not one single police report. So to me, that, that means it's BS. I mean, that's what I'm calling it. When, when you're looking at, a, at an urban legend, you always want to try to find documentation if possible. And that, that's what I do with, with any of these things. We talk about some outlandish things on this program. We talk about all kinds of monsters and demons and just things that are so far out there that normal people think we're absolutely out of our minds. But if you notice on this show, whenever we talk about a subject, I always go back to the source materials. I find documentation, whether it be witness reports or castings or photographs or video or court documents and like in the werewolf witch trials cases that we did a show on i found actual court documents from the middle ages where they talked about these people being accused of being werewolves and, and the trials and what the outcomes were i go back and i find that stuff you always have to look for that documentation and in a modern mystery like this that took place in the 1970s and all the way up till now there absolutely has to be documentation. Old Lady Johnson can't win the pie baking contest and get a blue ribbon without there being at least one newspaper article written about it in her hometown paper. 
And if you go back and you look, you can find that article. And you can say, look, old lady Johnson did bake a wonderful blueberry pie that won the pie baking contest at the county fair. There's the documentation. But I'm supposed to believe that all these groups of teenagers were murdered. And nobody thought to write an article about it. Nobody thought to file a police report when their kids didn't come home for dinner. I don't buy it. So on this one, I am definitely calling it BS. I don't think the Bunny Man exists. I think that it's a nonsense story that was made up over a couple police reports and blown up into this big urban legend thing. And I don't think there's any substance to it at all. And that's my ruling on it. What do you think, old boy? I pretty much agree with you. But there is something else that I was thinking about while you were talking. And this is true. This has happened. There was stuff talked about this, though. And it wasn't a lot. But some towns like to cover things up. And there, that could be a possibility, too. But now it's not because it got out. But that they just didn't want people to know about this stuff. And they erased it. And it's happened before in history. So that's a possibility. But I kind of go with James. I think it's all BS. I was just throwing that as another... You know, you always want to have an open mind to everything. And would you want a town knowing that people were getting murdered and gutted and teenagers were getting killed? No, because you want to make money. You want people to come into your town back then, especially because you needed the money. Well, there, you, you know, you could, you know, it was a small town, you know, not, you know, there was murderers all over the place getting away, especially in the 1900s. You can get away with a lot of stuff back then. You know, they could have covered up a lot of stuff, but that's highly unlikely. And like I said, I, I really do, I believe what James was saying earlier. I think it was just a story that now, like everybody does, what they'll do is they'll like a horror movie. You'll watch it, and then you'll see, oh, there's some kind of truth to it. Well, you make reality. Well, you know, something that doesn't exist, now you, you tell people about it, and you blow it up, and now it's getting talked about. It may not even be exist, but you're making it exist. And that's what they're doing. They're making a bunny man. Now it, it, people think this, some people think this thing exists. So, you know, that's what happens when a lot of these urban legends, you got to watch it because a lot of these people, in, like I said, I also like the whole theory of the moonshine thing because that's a possibility, especially around those areas, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, especially those times, you, you, that could be a possibility that we're trying to scare people away. And that's what I was saying. Maybe that's what it was. Somebody scaring somebody away from their moonshine. You know, they didn't want them to get caught and go to jail. So... That would make sense on that one. Like he was saying earlier, a lot of these people, people want to be famous, so what if I make up a story about the bunny man and exaggerate it? So now it becomes reality because somebody dressed up like the bunny man and copycatted it. So then people, oh, there must be some truth to it. Well, he made it a reality. People have made this story a reality. And I, I think it's bogus other than the 70s part of it. And I think there's always a truth to everything, but I think it got exaggerated. Or possibility they hit it they didn't want people to know what happened sometimes that happens it happened in in, in salem with the it happened with certain people with religious uh, you know they've twisted the history around so you never know and i'll get in that that's another story but like i said we talk about stuff that most people don't want they think we're crazy i even people at work and over the place and, man aren't you scared because they get some people watch your shows they get scared at night, they have to turn the light on or they can't sleep after a story we talk about because all these creatures and ghosts and demons and hellhounds, whatever we talk about, people will think we're crazy or we're out of our minds messing with this stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not scared of any of this. And you can think I'm lying, but I'm not. I love it. And it doesn't bother James. Trust me, I could tell you right now, James ain't scared of any of this. Neither am I. So I, I love it. I love doing the show and... I love doing this story right here because we, we, we kind of debunk this because not everything we're going to do is going to be, oh, yeah, it's 100% real. You know, we know it. We're, we're going to do the research and find out if it's real or not. And this one I don't think is real. I think it's an exaggerated campground story. That's all I could say. Yeah, I agree 100%. And it's funny because a lot of times when you talk about one of these kind of subjects, people come out of the woodwork with all this information, which is awesome. But then... The problem with the researcher lies that you have to actually run down all these leads. Somebody tells you this, so you have to go check it. Somebody tells you this other thing, so then you got to look that up and check that. 
you have to do your due diligence if you're going to do a show on something, I believe. Because when you go into something, you have to you have to be able to reasonably understand what you're talking about. And it, especially if you're trying to reach some kind of conclusion on whether it exists or not or or understand it better and help your audience understand it, you have to have done the research. And on this one, there's a whole lot of different stories that go along with this legend. I covered the most popular version of it, and I covered a couple accounts, and then I covered the actual police reports that are real. But there are literally dozens and dozens of other stories that go along with this myth that talk about the different adventures of Bunny Man, basically. Different groups of people that were murdered in different kind of ways by the Bunny Man. Sometimes they're parking in a car down in the woods. Sometimes they're at the bridge. Other times. So according to legend, basically what you have, you have, it, it really breaks down into two groups. You have the one set of stories that happen at the bridge. When you go there at midnight, especially on Halloween, and Bunny Man comes and kills you. That's one half of the legend. The other half of these stories come from people that are parking their cars at night out in the woods somewhere. Usually it's young people that are out there to be romantic. And then they get attacked. And a lot of those stories follow more the man with the hook kind of story where he'll come up to the car and start messing with the car and they're in the car screaming, oh, it's so dangerous. And then he hits the car with a hatchet or whatever. Those kind of stories. So you have a whole bunch of different ones. So there's a lot of information that you have to try to run down and check. And on this one, guys, I'll be honest with you, there's just not a lot of there there. Whether you're looking at the bridge or whether you're looking at the other half of the legend, which is the people parking in the cars, either way, there's not a lot of documentation. If people were getting attacked and murdered in their cars, it would be police reports. It would be newspaper articles. There would be television articles. There'd be, you know, reports. There'd, there'd be things that you could find that say, hey, this happened. But there just aren't. And yes, it's true, governments cover things up all the time. And local governments do too, just like the federal government does. They're all a bunch of damn liars. That's what politicians are. But you have to believe that if you have a group of teenagers, that's implying at least four or five, correct? I would assume. So if you had four or five kids being murdered, hung upside down from a bridge and gutted, happening every decade, and if you had people parking in a car that's at least two people and you have that happening on occasion you got to think that at least one of those parents would have said you know what i don't want to side with the town and cover this up i want people to know that my child was murdered to me that that makes a lot more sense because i don't know about you guys but if some crazy dude kills my kid i sure as hell ain't shutting up about it i'm not going to allow anybody to cover it up i don't care who the hell they are and I'll tell you the honest God truth, if you murder my kid, I'm going to find you, and I'm going to gut you, and I'm going to hang you from the damn bridge myself. You ain't going to have to worry about the bunny man. And i got to think that there had to be some parents out there that felt that way, that just would not go along with any kind of dumb cover-up that anybody tried to pull. So, like I said, this one completely does not hold water to me. I, I just don't buy it at all. And I think that the original police reports that this thing was based on, I think that most likely... They weren't that big of a deal either. I think that it was either just some crazy dude moving through or somebody trying to scare people for some reason or whatever. But in the original police reports, nobody died. The worst thing that happened was a hatchet got thrown through the windshield of somebody's car. Which, granted, is not nice. That's not a good neighborly thing to do. But it's definitely not gutting you and hanging you from a bridge. So I just don't think that there's anything here, guys. And we're just about out of time for this episode, so I'm going to throw back over to Old Boy so he can do his shout-outs. Thank you, brother. Um, yeah, I want to get uh, thanks for everybody to listen to the show, especially on Parax or Plugin or what our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for following us and, and listening to us. Uh, I think with 34 countries now, we're going to get a bigger audience and try to get somewhere, you know, maybe CBS one day, you never know. <laughs> But or or YouTube channel our own you know we that's what you know that's a goal where you know we want to see so you guys can get more of us and and learn more and and we love telling you guys these stories and trying to figure out if they're real or not 
But I love you guys. So remember, if you guys always want to listen to any of our old shows or newer shows, go on James Hershey Jr.'s uh, YouTube and subscribe. And you, there's all of our shows there. And um, also, he we have uh, a merchandise where we sell t shirts and all kinds of other stuff. And if you guys want to check it out, he'll tell you the, the website. If you guys also, you know, businesses out there want to sponsor us or have advertising, we have a plans on that too. So you guys can contact us both. He'll tell you the the information, but um, thank you guys. I love you. Good night. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Demon Hunter, Sugar Ladies and Misfits, have a great night. I love you. Blessed be. Good night, guys. The YouTube channel is youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. That's where you can find all the videos. We're also starting to put up evidence videos of different EVPs and stuff like that. We're starting to have paranormal groups that are actually sending us stuff to put on the channel so that's kind of cool so we have that on there as well the merchandise store is teespring.com slash stores with an s on the end slash staring into the abyss uh, that's where you can get shirts and posters and stickers and hoodies and the whole nine everything's there if you're into merch and you're interested in staring merch that's where you can find it um, also, you guys can go to our Facebook page and hit like on that. We never actually advertise most of this stuff, so we're going to have to start talking about it more, I guess. But on Facebook, there's a Staring Into Your Best page where you can go and you can actually like the page. And you can send us messages and stuff. If you guys want us to do a show on something, if you have a legend that you'd like us to look into or a subject that you would like us to look into and do a show on in the future, send us a message. Let us know. Uh, my email is horrorauthorjameshersheyjr at yahoo.com. You can send me an email there if you'd like uh, with any evidence that you have or if you just want to send me an uh, email about something. I, I actually get emails on that email quite a bit, believe it or not, from people that listen to the show and also people that read my books and stuff like that. I've given out that email multiple times for my books. Uh, so you can also use that to send me letters about the show. Next week's episode... I think I'm going to be doing another one where I actually answer a letter, which is kind of cool. I did that with the Do Angels Have Wings show. And I got another letter recently from a lady, and I think I might do the show on that letter next week. So that'll be kind of interesting. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what it is yet in case I decide I don't want to do it and I want to do something else and do that one later. But most likely that's going to be what the show will be next week. So... That's about all the time we have, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for all your support. We love you, and we appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Until we speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye.